Hello class, in this uh, video I'll explain ketogenesis and uh, you might have heard of the keto diet before, it's actually coming from the same principle. So remember when we talked about between meal and fasting, how you only have so much glycogen storage in the liver and then you really are dependent on the fact that there is fat breakdown um, for the energy and that's called um, ketogenesis and the generation of ketone and the breakdown of fat to allow for the body to have energy. Okay, so I want to explain a little what that ketogenesis. In this video, I'll focus on explaining ketogenesis um, in the normal state. And, and when we get to diabetes, I'll explain, explain diabetic ketoacidosis, that is when it becomes a pathological um, critical state. So the body needs ATP to survive. So what's going on is you have the glucagon and you're releasing glycogen, but eventually the glycogen is re and depleted from the liver. So you're depending on the fat cells and the fatty acids from those fat droplets um, to be the energy source. And those fatty acids are converted to ketones in the liver. And that is called ketogenesis. So the ketogenesis is the conversion of fat into um, ketones and energy. So that is ketogenesis. The ketone will be put into the blood and there'll be an increased level of ketone in the bloodstream and the brain can use ketone for energy. So let's, um, let's talk about what that looked like. Just quickly summarize that in a quick drawing. So like I said, what happens is when you have, when the patient has a, when you have starvation or low amount of food for a long time, um, you're going to have to, not a long time, but, you know, skipping a meal, long-term fasting, um, decreasing food, or in the case of diabetics later on, we'll talk about is that there is low glucose in cells. So this can also happen. This can also happen if you eat food, but the food is low in glucose. So there's again, low available glucose in cell. So that is the principle of the keto diet where it is the food has very, very low carbs, low in glucose, but high amount of fat. Because when there is either low food or low glucose for the cells, then what happens, or low glucose getting into the cell, then what happens is you have to turn to fat burn. So as the fat is being burned for energy, for ATP, so you're basically counting on more fat ketogenesis for that ATP. As the fat breaks down, you will generate a product called ketone. Small levels of ketone, your healthy kidney can process that and not cause a lot of problems. But when it's too high, then the ketone does build up and that, that goes into, stays in the blood. And that is when you can have issues. But the high ketone does stay, um, does go into the blood and then they um, can cause later on we can talk about diabetic ketoacidosis but the ketone can be used by the brain for energy and ketone um, does have a fruity like a banana smell so sometimes when a patient is going through ketogenesis a high amount of ketogenesis you can actually smell that but ripe fruit fruity smell in your breath okay so that's ketogenesis. Again, I'll talk a little bit more about it in diabetes when it's diabetic ketoacidosis. So the body, this is a summary figure of a hormones that regulate blood glucose. So I want you to review insulin and the lack of insulin um, and also glucagon. But there are actually other hormones that will kick in to help your body not get into the critical hypoglycemia, which is the blood glucose is lower than 50 because the central nervous system is going to be deprived of glucose and the brain can shut down, leading to coma and death. So the body, when they're in desperate mode, what happens is that it will go into releasing epinephrine. 
okay, the fight or flight, and then the cortisol. So this is stress hormone from the stress pathway from number one. So you're like, why is the stress pathway here? Well, starvation and hunger is stressful because you're, you're close to this deprivation. You don't want that to happen. So epinephrine and cortisol will be released to allow you to produce glucose, but also break down any storage of glucose or break down any fat for energy. So you're in this stress state. Okay. Epinephrine, because it's a fight or flight hormone release uh, when you're hungry, when you're starving, is that it's also going to create the shaky, the shaking, the, the, the sweat, the feeling of uh, cold sweat. And that's when you know um, you're getting very low on that glucose level. Okay. Um, and also, if you ever heard of the word hangry, like when you're hungry or angry, well, you're stressed. So that's why the hunger produces the stress response. Um, and that's why you're hangry. The growth hormone, remember the short term growth hormone, a lot of people think, why is growth hormone here? Well, the, remember the short term growth hormone has a metabolism effect of fat breakdown and again, glucose production for, um, for ATP. Okay, so you're trying to get ATP and release any energy you have in storage to allow you to survive so that you're not going to reach the critical hypoglycemia period. Okay, you should practice reviewing the functions that we went over and um, do these questions. And also, there is a practice quiz on normal blood homeostasis before you start on the diabetes.